tonight on BCN Weekly News. In this week's special report, the annual SGA debates have begun. Who will be Connor Courtney's successor and what can we expect from these changes? Also, the Labor Department is debating on changing its name. Dean of Labor Collis Robinson took the time to contact to connect with students and host a forum about these changes. And students performed at a drag show. Stay tuned to see some clips from these performances and, and interviews with show organizers. All of this and more coming up soon, tonight on BCN Weekly News. Live from BCN Arts Studio in Berea, Kentucky, this is BCN Weekly News. Good evening and welcome back to another episode of BCN Weekly News. My name is Amaya Weekly. Spring 2023 marks the end of Connor Courtney's presidency with the SGA. He held an event last Tuesday for students to meet the new running candidates. Matt Carmack attended this event. This March marks the end of an era of Connor Corney's presidency with the SGA. This fall, a new SGA will come and a female president will begin. Connor Corney has been working this year with Maggie Neal on improving his commitment to the student body. Because he graduates this spring, he has been working to find the successor for executive president and vice president. Some of the notable things Corney has done for the Bria community include expanding gender inclusive housing, opening 24-7 visitation, medical amnesty, revision to the general requirements, and much more. Taking over will be Lily Barnett, a current first semester junior who is running with Uvi Gitalia. Their mission includes creating transparency between the SGA and students on campus, opening a thrift store for students, and a labor grievance program to help students connect with their labor office and improve their experiences at work. Along with Barnett and Gitaliev, the SGA can also expect sophomore president and vice president Abraham Garcia Romero running with Shady Wood, Sue Lamnahazi for sophomore senator, Andrea Ramos for junior senator, and running for junior class president and VP is Travion Newton and Sunelli Ebenani. The SGA hosted an open debate last Tuesday in Bear Lounge. This, however, was canceled since all candidates were unopposed. Regardless, the candidates took time to share their goals and their new positions. I had the opportunity to sit down with the president and VP-elect to hear their goals and thoughts for this new era. Well, I think Olvi is very persistent. He's very goal-oriented. He knows what he wants to do and he, he does it. Um, I think I'm a little bit softer in terms of communication and making sure everything is going smoothly between getting those goals done. I think Olvi's a little bit stern sometimes and I am there to like, soften the blow of that sternness. If you have any student issues, please, please, please come talk to us. I would love to learn more about your issues because they're also my issues. Um, and yeah. yeah, let's. Yeah, like honestly, if you ever have any problems, CC us on those emails and we'll see what we can do for you. Well, I'm excited to see how Lily and Ovi affect the student body for the next two years. And good luck to all of the new SGA members. It's going to be a great next two years. Reporting from alumni for BC and Weekly News, Matt Carmack. Back to Amaya. Thanks, Mac. On behalf of BCN Weekly News, we are excited to see these changes happen. We'll be right back with more news after this. More than 90% of a child's brain develops before the age of five, making these early years critical for future success. Fortunately, togetherness can go a long way to support learning development. Reading, counting, playing, together. It's really that simple to increase your child's readiness to open up a world of possibilities. This is Kentucky, where the only thing ordinary is the unexpected. Come see for yourself. Plan your trip at KentuckyTourism.com. I'm getting vaccinated against COVID-19. Yes, there could be some short-term side effects from the vaccine, but they go away in a day or two. Those are signs that my body's building protection. It's worth it to avoid serious problems from COVID-19 disease. Thanks for staying with us. The Labor Department is not only planning on changing the name to the Labor Program, but also to improve the experiences of students overall. 
Last week, an email was sent out by Collis Robinson with a survey link in order to gain student feedback on the name of the labor program. The email gave historical context to the creation of the labor program, which originated in 1859 and became a requirement for all students in 1906. The email then explains that the the current name of the labor program does not accurately take into account the vastness of work, learning, and service that the students across multiple departments experience on and off campus. This survey will remain open through March 30th and was sent out on March 16th. In addition to this survey, an in-person forum was held on Monday, March 20th. This forum was located in the Haffer Gibson building and was organized by the Student Government Association and the Labor Program Office. This forum this forum was designed to obtain feedback from campus community members regarding the labor name change and any other labor-related matters. The forum started at 4 p.m. and lasted an hour and included a short presentation about why a new name for the labor program is being considered. This was followed by audience input of students and staff who were given the opportunity to express their opinions about the, the name and to give possible name suggestions. Students who couldn't make it to the forum are encouraged to fill out the survey to communicate any questions or concerns. In other news, on this past Friday, March 17th, the SGA hosted an event that is held every year, a drag show. This drag show was an altered version of what the Student Government Association usually does for these performances. Rather than inviting the professional drag queen performers, a sign-up sheet for students to participate was sent out via email by SGA President Connor Courtney in late February. This means that this year's drag show was hosted and performed entirely by students. Because of this, SGA realized that the students who wanted to perform may not have the materials or funds needed in order to match the drag glam style. So in collaboration with the GSA and CAB, SGA offered financial assistance to students who may have needed it in order to participate. In addition, no qualifications or prior experience was needed in order to take part in the show. I spoke with SGA members Shady Wood and Abraham Garcia Romero to talk about the stage managing process of the show and the bigger picture regarding Berea College's values. So basically what I did is I had a headset and I communicated with the sound and the lights um, to make sure that the whole program ran smoothly. I made sure that the performers were getting costume changes down, didn't need anything, any questions that they asked I was there to answer. So there have been great strides in these past couple of years that the SGA has taken in order to help our members of the LGBTQ community on campus feel more heard and represented, especially in these very trying times, not only for our community, but for our state and country, uh, where rhetoric has unfortunately taken a hold of, of many institutions and in public spaces. Most recently, we are incredibly proud of the drag show that we just held, our third annual drag show hosted by the SGA and it comes on the heels of legislation right now as, as many of us know in Frankfurt to either target uh, transgender children, uh, teens, the LGBTQ community and ban drag shows. I think by having this drag show we're saying we're taking a stand and we're going to let drag live on as its expressive form you know as the expressive form of art that it is and it, you know it's intended to be and so we look forward to next year's drag show and my message to anyone hearing out there that wants to stop any of this art or these people living their lives how they're intended to live them um, let drag live on and love is love the show was held at 8 p.m. in the Phelps Stokes Chapel and had a fairly decent turnout as students packed inside in order to support their friends or just to have a good time we are excited to hear what SGA does next year with its annual drag show and if they decide to keep allowing students to participate. On behalf of our news team, thank you for watching BCN Weekly News. I'm Amaya Weekly. For more coverage, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Berea College News Radio and watch our show online at www.bcnewsradio.com. We'll see you next week. Good night.